Hi guys, welcome to IMHO. In my homosexual opinion, I'm Auntie Chan. Oh, I'm Darby Lynn Cartwright. And I'm Alexis P. Bevels. The P stands for look at these lovely big, can I say tits? <laughs> pits. Look at, these lovely look at my big lovely pits. big pits. <laughs> And today, we're oh. reviewing Slag, Slag. Slag Wars. Wars. Oh my gosh, ladies. First of all, before we get into it, I am so happy to be back. I mean, we're obviously not all together, but I haven't, I was socially distant sick the time, the last time we all filmed. And then the last thing mm -hmm. we did was film separately. I haven't seen you in yeah. years. How are you? Yeah. How are you? How are you? How are the children? Oh, my girls. Yeah, yeah the well, girls. The, Sabina's good. Margaret's having she's having a hard time with the schooling at home thing, so it's been mm. it's been rough because I don't her know mom math. doesn't know math. <gasps> exactly. <laughs> you better read. <laughs> Did you say Sabina and Margaret? Yeah, they're named after their grandmas. Because my mom, That's... my moms are lesbians. Does God love yeah. my two mommies? I have a coffee table book, uh, a children's book called Does God Love Michael's Two Daddies? It's a Christian book, so at the end, spoiler alert, God doesn't. But oh. um, <laughs> but it's still pretty fun. Maybe you should write like a parody version, a good version of that book. Oh, where it ends up where God does love them? Oh, yeah. Wow. I really have to use my imagination. Can we address yes. the the tiny little elephants in the room? Your lovely Clementitties? Well, Mm -hmm. No, first I want to point out your gorgeous big tits. Chan, this lovely mm -hmm. big tits. They look I, amazing. They're a little swollen today. Got a couple <laughs> bites in the front and I could not stop itching them. So this is them inflamed. <laughs> <laughs> what size are they um, usually? What size are they when the, the Well, they're a C. They're mm. a C on the red. Really? That's just, you know, yeah, it's my grandmother's side. Um, I, thought they were and... I thought they were CDs. Like CD's tits. <laughs> no. We, we're not going to be monetized. Tits. Let's just let it go. CD tits are too good. No, go sorry. Well, what size are yours, Miss Alexis? Because. Oh, yeah. Them's is a bounce house. Thank you so much. These are um, double P's. Double P's. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's what the P stands, stands for. for uh, balloon. Balloons. Yeah, these are balloons. I don't have uh, I don't have a breastplate. I can't afford one. So I went for the Target brand. And we love a DIY tit job. Mm -hmm. I love Actually, that. I think they're quite fetching. Yeah. I think they're quite I would absolutely. Fetching. If I were you, I'd get drunk and I'd sit in my front window. See what happens. <laughs> well, I didn't have, um, not only did, did I not have a breastplate, but I, I don't have balloons. I'm not allowed to have them anymore since that incident at the high school. Uh -huh. So all I have were clementines. So I made little mm. clement clement titties. Yeah, yeah they're very I... fitting. <laughs> Do you like how low they are? I also just love the smell of a clementine coming right out of your bra. It takes me back. After a long day of work, <laughs> nothing better than taking the clementines out of your bra. Out of your, out of your Absolutely. Bra. Let's talk about the reason we're all here. Ladies, we're on a break from Drag mm -hmm. Race. Slag Wars, uh, the show brought to us by Men.com, one of my favorite movie studios. And yes, of course. The, <laughs> uh, we can't say the real name, right? So what, what should we say? The Croc Destroyers? Yes, we do want to be monetized. So we'll say the, the Croc Destroyers, everyone's favorite, mm -hmm. right? They have come out with can we say Slag too? Uh, let's just hope the person that watches the video is American so they don't understand. Okay, okay. Tan, in your words, what do you, how would you describe a slag? What is a slag? I don't have a funny answer, but is it like a slur for like <laughs> ho? Like a like a whore? Is that a slag? <laughs> is it a sl I don't have a funny answer, but is it like whore? <laughs> 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 That's pretty funny. I think it's like British uh, Yeah, I think it's like slut. Yeah. It's like slut, right? I do feel bad for all the young girls that like that's something that gets thrown at them like all we had in high school was people would call us faggot and that was just like that was like don't worry i'll take that word back someday but mm -hmm. girls just they they immediately go to slut and whore and i hate that call them faggots you know <laughs> 
Well, speaking of smoking mm -hmm. fags, should we get into this? Did you? Okay. <laughs> I don't know where you were, like, emotionally the going into fell. this. Oh. No. Darby, I didn't know what this was going to be, <laughs> but I just love the, the Croc Destroyer so much. And yes. five minutes in, I was so excited. I love this show. First frame, I saw Chase Icon, and I knew that the producers had taste. I knew yeah. that this was going to be something to be consumed over the internet. And I love that it's yeah. on their own website and that it's free to access um, mm -hmm. so that we you know they don't run into any trouble and they just get to put out their content. Yeah, I agree with Chan. I think like Chase Icon starting off the entire series, you know that the editors and the producers have the same sense of humor you're looking for in this show. Absolutely. And the fact that she goes on to be the narrator of the whole show, the commentary, <gasps> I want to say one of the top highlights <sighs> of the viewing experience for me. If you don't know, this is on slagwars.com. Go to slagwars.com. They're not paying us to promote. The show is that good. I went into the show, of course, like excited because I was just like, oh, this is going to be so silly. And like, I love the croc destroyers and I can't wait to see them destroying all those crocs. And, <laughs> but I was a little worried because I was like, oh, but I really, I love them so much. I want them to be a big part of it. I want to get to know the contestants, of course, but I really want to see the Croc Destroyers have fun. Yeah, no, the show was like 70% them. <laughs> I was here mm -hmm. for it. Speaking of the other 30%, wait, 70%, 20%. Um, it's let's fine. Talk about the, Matt's, should we talk Matt's about your the left one. Yeah, that was Matt. Oh, hold on. She's not even. Should we talk about these gorgeous <laughs> contestants? Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. First up is American Nikki Monet, icon, legend, and star. Yeah. Have y'all heard of Nikki Monet before this? I have not heard of Nikki Monet before the show, TBH, but I am living for her, mm -hmm. as they say. She is very transparent with her feelings, and I love that. Emphasis yeah. on trans. Yeah, she's awesome. I also love that the kind of entrance wasn't, uh, there wasn't like a, a look, no shade. I actually love this about it. There wasn't like an entrance look, like what you get on another show. You could tell she clearly just like got done traveling. Yeah, she Chase got Icon even says yes. later. Yeah, she was like sweatpants and fishnets, the American dream. I love that when she, she ran in and she's got this like suitcase on this like gravel pit. And she's like, hello, is anyone here? <laughs> and Chase is like, what did she say? I don't know. She was something about how loud she was. But I could just imagine a producer was like, stop moving. Go over, stay in the pit. Stay, no, don't go on the sidewalk. <laughs> I loved her though. I lived uh, for her. This entire episode, I was, I, even when she became Miss Bossy Pants on the skit, I'm like, I, I understand that. I enjoyed her. Mm -hmm. Up next, Kevin from Scotland who is not a sex worker, but he is a super fan of the, the Croc Destroyers. Yeah. Fan of the show. Fan of the show, <laughs> big fan, big fan. I mean, he said he's from a small town. He's very unfamiliar with like- Aberdeen. Everything, who? He's from Aberdeen, <laughs> Scotland, which is Aberdeen. so funny because I competed against Aberdeen in a competition one time. We were supposed to sing Firework by Katy Perry and she lit fireworks from her tits. And, and what did you so like? Funny, huh? I, I I lit the stage on fire. With oh, my, with, is that what burned person. down Scarlet? Is that when Scarlet burned down again? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I kind of miss Scarlet. I love Scarlet. I miss Scarlet too. I loved his little accent. I loved that he was he seemed kind of shy but he came on this show and was like i'm gonna try it i thought he was so cute i i'm sorry i don't mean to to jump ahead but i love that rebecca said it doesn't matter what you are on the outside you you can be a destroyer i'm sorry you could be a croc destroyer on the inside so you don't have to do mm -hmm. sex work to be a croc destroyer um, yeah it's a feeling it's a mentality on the flip side what did we think of his conversation with what's her name with Nikki, yeah, Nikki. What, what what was your I thoughts with Nikki? Personally, Sorry. I didn't think it was that kind of uh, volatile. Like, I didn't think it was Same. that bad. Cause I Same. feel like later mm -hmm. when he told Rebecca, I think he gave her the impression that it was more aggressive than it was because then Rebecca said yeah. something to Nikki. Well, I didn't think it was that big a deal. Well, I th maybe in Scotland, they don't have conversations. They just have 
kilts. I kind of got Nikki's point. I am not a part of the sex work community. And for a community that faces such ridicule and physical like harm, I get where she was coming from, that she's like, we are all in sex work and we are all a part of this community and this is our show, like time for us to like, you know, make a name for ourselves. And you're just a super fan. And yeah. I agree too. I just don't think, I don't think she was aggressive about it. I think she was genuinely mm -hmm. just like, oh, one of these things is not yeah. like the other. So what's, what are you doing here? She just lays it very blunt, which is like who she is. But yeah. you know, when you're coming from a small town, you're very intimidated by everything. So that conversation can come off as a little like gatekeepy. Like who are you to decide like what I can and can't be. But you know, she, she does make a really good point for kind of what a producer wants to hear out of the conversation. Aren't you kind of like scared of your your situation? Like you are the the outsider. And then he kind of turns it around to her too. Like, aren't you kind of scared? Like you're the only American. So I guess out of that conversation, they just have a realization that they're, you know, representing something different. Yeah, that, but that, it's I mean, also, that goes back to like how they're casting. As the audience member, this is a brand new show. This is the first time anyone's seeing it. And it's the first of its kind, really. We don't know what it mm -hmm. what it takes to be a, a croc destroyer. I mean, we can imagine, but- I mean, we tried. Right. We've all tried. Speaking of contestants, up next from London, Tyrese. Tyrese, a non-berry, uh, non, non-berry. Non-berry. Non-dairy. Did not yeah, want to say non-dairy. <laughs> Non-dairy, right. non-berry, and non-binary. A dancer from London. Tyrese is so cute. So what do you think? cute. Very, very cute. Very cute. The thing that really made me laugh a lot with them was that they kept saying, this is the first season. We're the season one cast. And when they, like their first talking head, they were like, I'm the dancer of season one. And I was like, what oh, do yeah. you think this show is? <laughs> <laughs> well that's kind of the fun yeah. what is it we don't know yet it reads as very like excited young little baby coming in and like i'm on season one. Oh, up next all the way from mexico it's gustavo ernesto escopado Ooh. mendoza or puppy for short gustavo ladies gustavo he's Ooh. always eating I know. his mouth is always occupied it's it makes I you think it. things well he can't lose me mass laugh. He can't lose mass. He's on a strict eating schedule. So as someone who has, you know, also is very into their mass, uh, you do have to maintain a certain eating schedule. That's why I'm drinking wine right now. I didn't know now. you were Catholic. Yeah, it's for mass. This is <laughs> Jesus' blood. Wait, blood was he lamb. eating the body of Christ? Yeah, he was eating the body of Christ. Hold on now, I'm getting The blood of the lamb. <laughs> Up next, a uh, couple, Levi and Cameron, both from Manchester, but uh, competing separately, even though they are boyfriends. I had uh -huh. such a reaction to them as a former twink. <laughs> I I was so excited because I knew I was gonna hate them. I liked Cameron more than I liked who's the 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 skinny? Levi. 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 But Levi mm. played the role yeah. that Levi's supposed to play. Mm -hmm. Like I liked it. Yeah. I don't know. They're mm -hmm. crazy. I liked it. And last but certainly not least is Cain, also from London. Another biblical name. Mm -hmm. We got Levi, Cain. Abel. I think Gustavo's well, in the Bible. Well, we did have Abel, but yeah. Cain killed Abel. This Cain, though, very classic twink bod, very twinky. He's got a fun energy yeah. so far. And he very. is a sex worker. I like him. I think that's what he led himself in with, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. he used to be a sex worker, and then he started throwing shows like with drag queens and stuff. And then mm -hmm. he's trying to get back into sex work again. He's trying mm -hmm. to push back into that, which like, you look great. So use it yeah. while you got it. The relationship of drag well, queens kind of and sex workers and like porn stars, it kind mm -hmm. of like comes together, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, I think this is why gay Twitter and just gay people in general had such a reaction to the Croc Destroyers when they first came into mm -hmm. the world is because they're so positive they're so sex positive, they're enthusiastic, and it, they're about being authentic and fun, and it doesn't have to be serious. And, and destroying and Crocs. That's they why I was them. so excited. And destroying Crocs. Yeah. The first challenge they do, kind of a getting to know you break the ice, is a pole dance moment. Have y'all pole danced before? Have y'all ever mm -hmm. tried it? No. Me either. I've played with one a couple times. Oh. Yeah. Oh. How'd oh. it go? 
where to go. Yeah. The only experience I have with pole dancing is what I've seen on The Real Housewives. So it was actually kind of fun to see, <laughs> to see a different take. My favorite part though was the the ladies, the croc destroyers awesome. just on the side, just going in for everyone. Even poor Levi, who decided just to do poses. <laughs> You're right, right. Levi was like, I can't dance, so I'm just gonna... Levi had the energy of Dahlia, and I just hope that when they send Levi home, they send, they like at least bring him <laughs> back for broccoli play. Like, I <laughs> hope that there's some sort of... <laughs> oh thing for him because he's put so much work into his body and his face I and his 600,000 followers and his 600,000 600, but he doesn't forget when he used to be at 6,000 yeah. remember he, he told, <laughs> yes I agree with you Alexis hearing the croc destroyers like because it was the first challenge of their new series they had so much energy so much positivity so everything everyone did including levi they're like oh yeah we mm -hmm. like that that's hot yeah ooh, yeah you pose i want them to host everything always yeah mm -hmm. i didn't know on. what to expect from the challenge because like we were talking about earlier this is like the first episode and i didn't know if i would see some nudity i was like you know this is from men.com like i thought i'd see like genitalia i was prepared to for anything but it was it was pretty cute where they you know whatever they did <laughs> i was expecting <laughs> yeah. to, i was expecting to see like a strip show but whole. you know you're expecting to see whole. a whole it was pretty tame kind of like a fun gateway into i almost i almost brought it up to my mom when i talked to her after i watched it no. i was like there's this new show and then i remembered what it is don't follow don't follow yeah. that instinct no. take that back Take that, hold on to that power. I didn't, I just asked for money. Well, when they, there was, there was a moment when Rebecca says the F word and they bleeped it. And I was like, oh, yeah, they did. I'm not gonna see Hole. They're bleeping the F word. Oh, uh, you're right, it. you're right. Although speaking of Hole, didn't you notice, for, first of all, I'm very impressed by the production. Mm -hmm. The songs, the camera. Hilarious, work. the songs were hilarious. Mm -hmm. Did you know they call them the slag choir in the credits? There's an official slag choir and like, can I audition? That's so <laughs> funny. I love that it was kind of like, so their main challenge is, they call it a passion project, which mm -hmm. I love. Again, with like the positive energy. And their passion project, they had to do a viral video. Darby's gone viral many times, yes. just uh, medically. But yeah. Chan, you are the queen of viral videos. I feel Sophie's energy in her viral moments. And it's just being crazy. If you just let go and let loose and be nuts on the internet, they will react to it. And I just love mm -hmm. the nut that Sophie is. And Rebecca Moore too. I love Rebecca Moore's video where she's walking through the house and she's like rubbing her finger up against the picture frame. She's like, <laughs> dusty. And she like looks at a, another one. She's like, that's crooked. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's the greatest. I truly yeah. I, I truly cannot fathom how she walks in those heels. Because oh, right. those are crazy. I do have to say, I saw a lot of Auntie Chan in Sophie. There's a lot of down to play, but also just wanting everyone to feel loved and happy. Like that was a very Auntie Chan. I was like, they need to get together. <laughs> and then Rebecca who's like get it together sophie like i get it but like we gotta do this i was like that's me wait wait wait. who am i who am i uh the hot tub <laughs> <laughs> you want to be the matthew hot tub camp with the broken pipe yeah you're matthew oh we did get, we do have matthew camp who is rebecca's business partner so and uh the co-owner of daddy couture which i was looking at their instagram last night they're very body positive mm-hmm their whole thing is sexy, uh, sexy garments for all bodies, all thems, all types, all bind, you know, whatever. Mm, Speaking good. of, I'm, can I, okay, can I say, Curtis and I, we went to Target yesterday, six feet apart. We've never, we haven't seen each other. Like we live together, but it's always six feet apart. But <laughs> we were going to Target and I was wearing kind of a, I was wearing a sweater with a lot, like a lot of holes in it. And Curtis is like, you've been wearing a lot more like daring stuff. You wear like crop tops now. Like, I'm glad that you feel this way, but what do you think has changed? 
And I was like, honestly, like when I felt like my body was at its best, I was never more uncomfortable with it. But now that my body has changed and we're in this environment where everyone is just so body positive, I don't know about y'all, but I just feel like, mm -hmm. fuck it. I love seeing everyone else's bodies. I love seeing what they consider imperfections that I consider like beautiful and exciting to see. Maybe I can be that for somebody else. Maybe someone can say like, oh, that is definitely not a six pack coming out of that hole in that shirt. And they're having fun and they look great. That's beautiful. And I really am happy for you that you're feeling comfortable. I do just want to point out the timing that you're feeling confident when you are literally wearing a mask that's covering half your face. Okay, yeah, you're right. You know what? <laughs> I'm feeling the Sam. best I've ever felt. That's why I robbed banks and tube tops because my face was covered and I always felt so sexy. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. I take it back. <laughs> no, 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 I take no, it no. back. I hate no, my no, body. No, no, no. You, you look beautiful. Body negative. You look body negative. I thought we were but about to have a beautiful like moment. I literally thought we were about to have a beautiful moment. I was like, oh, what's the life? I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry. No, but no, you have body the, people, I'm jealous. You have a croc destroyer mindset. That's like, that's what they're about. It's just all positive. They're so affirming, which is, you know, to spoil it ahead, like Sophie gets kind of upset when they do have to play by the rules and it's an elimination series and it's really hard for her okay. to send someone home. I think something's coming. I think they're gonna change the game. Oh. Like Sophie gets mad in the bed and then at the end she has her big freak out I mean, it's like, yeah, they signed up for a competition series. They knew it was coming, but Sophie has such a big heart and she has such lovely big tits. Yeah. And she doesn't want anyone to be in the bottom or go home. Like, why can't... And I've I've had this thought, too, of another uh, uh, series. Why can't everyone just stay? I mean, I think that's why it's a to be continued. I think that Sophie's going to get her way and Sophie is just a brilliant actress. I don't think she's actually pissed off at everybody. Mm -hmm. I don't know, because I, I, I read... Rebecca's reaction to Sophie as very genuine. They could be well, sort of in on it, but they could also, I mean, that could just be how Sophie feels, you know? They probably have like some kind of framework set up that they're gonna follow in terms of like scheduling their, their filming, but I feel like they're gonna work with the wants of Sophie. I don't know. I hope so. I'd love to put everything in Sophie's hands. I would love for them to keep people longer. I don't know that I want them to keep them the entire time, but I'm definitely not ready to see Levi go home. I have right. to see whatever it is he believes he is because I haven't seen it yet and I want to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of enchanting how yeah. he thinks he's the absolute shit. I love he doesn't it. want to pole dance they or did, do a video. They did a really good job casting because he is kind of hitting that influencer trope that people do a parody of but he is you know yeah. hitting that without without any effort of like them writing around it you know as an yeah. influencer myself mm -hmm. you know i've done three makeup videos i mm. i i appreciate the trope you know sometimes we have to play into it like when l'oreal contacted mm -hmm. me and they said hey please stop, stop tweeting about us they had chris crocker on the original viral queen, mm -hmm. Chris Crocker. Remember yeah. Leave Britney Alone? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you don't remember, Darby's going to do her impression of it. <gasps> oh, sure, 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 sure. <laughs> Leave Britney alone. <laughs> Can I do porn now? I needed porn. <laughs> Was that good? I was beautiful. You were laughing when you did it, though. Like, you were kind of happy Britney was suffering, but I'll give it to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've all been on that journey, okay? We've all had, we've gone back and forth with Britney. Now we're all very on Team Britney, but we've yes. all we've all made yes. our Britney mistakes. And and Britney is saved, apparently. You know, she's in, yeah. she's in control with her She's sister. no longer living in the crossroads. She got a gym and then she burned it down. She burned it down. Just like <laughs> she, did it. Yeah. she did. Yeah. She did. Oh, I forgot to mention the guy that they brought in who did all the filming. His name is Matt Lambert. I don't think that's important. He directs porn. Oh, yeah. I would love to direct pornography, but maybe not the sex part, just like the acting, like before and after. Mm -hmm. You know how, so just like, that out there. how uh, controlling I get about certain things. Can you imagine me trying to direct porn? I'd be like, your penis is hard, and I like that, but I want it to be softer in the middle. Can you make it soft in the middle? Think about baseball. 
Saw it in the middle. I wonder if just well, I want it to be well because remember I had that guy and his penis was cut in half, so it was always really <gasps> hard in the middle. So now in my mind, I want it really soft. Mm. Like spaghetti. Like a little twinkie, like a soft center. Mm. Like a yes. <laughs> like Levi. I want a little Levi in the middle. A delicious crust with a soft center. Why do like porn directors they all either wear hoodies or like jeans that don't fit them well? Because or... they're hard. They have boners the whole time. These are all... <laughs> I will say, I felt a little bad for the ladies when they were doing that, like, mix and mingle, deciding who would win. They were in that gravel pit again. Oh, I know. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Those poor girls and in their had, heels. She had heels on. Yep. Uh, that house is gorgeous. I mean, what, beautiful. A, what an amazing house. Do you have to shoot in the gravel pit outside every time? <laughs> Can you shoot on, like, tile? Do Can they step forward into the grass, maybe? Like, why the gravel? <laughs> yeah. Like, it's right there. They're waiting. That's top four. They're waiting until the top four. <sighs> and will the top four please step forward? And everyone's finally flat-footed. Oh, yes. They're like, ugh. Maybe when they eliminate someone, the reason they're in the gravel pit is a hole opens up, like a sinkhole, and it takes down. <laughs> <laughs> they see them sinking into, like, a gravel glory hole. They're like, mm, does it feel good? <laughs> <laughs> Who won? Who won this episode? Gustavo and Twink. What was his name? Gustavo and Kane yes. both won. Yeah. They had the vampire viral video, which was funny. Mm -hmm. And it which seemed was funny that and they were kinda hot. So hot. I would watch that. Yeah. 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 And yeah. that is oh, like typical you... daddy Twink. Yeah. 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 Right. That right up my alley. But what about Kane's outfit? in the challenge? Do y'all remember Kane's outfit? Oh, with the bow. Yeah, because he was the a cute, cute little bow. like. Loved it. Yeah. I loved that. And Kane's body, get out of here. Kane's look, the yeah. ruffled latex. Gorge. That was a look. Yeah, that's one thing. Yeah. So they, they all got to, to kind of do a little runway with some latex. The theme was lavish latex, but there wasn't but they made a special point to be like, Yeah, we're not judging you on your looks. But this is just for fun. Yeah. The audience. This, can. It's for you, but you can't yeah, right. It was cute. Tyrese's look, that cute oh. little ruffle skirt. Are you yeah, kidding? That was really cute. Tyrese so looked They're adorable. fire. This, to me, hit show. 10 out of 10. Hit. It really does hit a group, like multiple groups of people that do share a lot in common, but we've never had like a show that kind of highlights the different intersectionalities between the community. So it's really cool to see, you know, sex positive, uh, non-binary people. Yeah, and, and a beautiful way for more people to to change minds is to put an actual face to it, in this case, sex work or just non-binary or whatever, and say, oh, well, that's a real person. Maybe I can care about yeah. their rights. I think this is there's a beautiful opportunity for more of that kind of talk. Well, and like Chan said, like the, the intersectionality is not something that we often as a community like really face. Seeing Nikki sit down with Kevin and say like, yeah, this is just how I feel as a trans woman, as a sex worker, and you're a cis non-sex worker, that's an important conversation to have. And I applaud them both for going all into it. And at the end, they left with understanding each other. And that's mm -hmm. hard to do. Alexis, I don't understand a word you say. So it's hard to do. Well, and that's why we're such good friends. Um, because... <laughs> yeah, because of your lovely big you know, tits. Because all I care about is your lovely, lovely big, big tits. tits. And I oh. love your tits, Chan. Ooh. Well, hers, oh, thank her, you. hers are gorge, gorge. And to accentuate them with that harness, get out of here. That is style, that is flair, that is there. That's how she became the Channy. Oh my goodness. This this is really the the jugs chan. This is this is where I was gorge. supposed to be. I have arrived. Gorge. You have arrived. Yes. Hey, wait, who am I? <laughs> <gasps> Hillary! Oh! Before we go, though, it's something that we started with one week, went with two weeks. It ended up kind of being the entire month of November. We were raising money for the oh, Chicago yeah. Black Drag Council. And truly, after we brought it up again, instead of y'all kind of like backing off and being like, we've already done it, a lot of you who had already given gave again. It's so meaningful to us that you trust us enough to choose organizations that are doing such amazing work and that you continue to give for that. So we are going to go ahead and make that donation in your name and we want to thank you. So ladies, do we have a Croc Destroyer type thank you song as their names scroll by? 
Put your hole in your hoodie. <laughs> so to introduce you to the charity for the month of December, I've made this little quick video so you'll get a better understanding of just exactly what this money will go to. Chicago Coalition for the Homeless is the only nonprofit in Illinois solely dedicated to advocating for and with homeless people, including families, students, youth, ex-offenders, and low-wage workers. They advocate for a shelter safety net, supportive housing, access to quality public schools, health care, and human services. Outreach at 40 shelter, school, and street programs reaches over 10,000 youth and adults yearly. Since 1980, the Chicago Coalition for the Homeless has had a clear mission. They organize and advocate to prevent and end homelessness because they believe housing is a human right in a just society. The donations that you make to add IMH to the show on Venmo, if you specifically say it goes to this charity, it'll go to them. Otherwise, it'll go to us so that we can buy food for ourselves. All right, ladies. Well, we'll see you next right, week. Babes. Bye, babes. Next week for a new episode of... Snag wall. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, yes. oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. My lovely mallet. It's, it's a sun. Donations for oh, Dick. Donations for Dick. Put it in Thank my mouth. you for donating. It's a sun. Take it. Spunk it all out. I'm going to grab you by the balls. Oh, and I'm going to drain it. 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 I'm gonna drain it, it, drain it, drain it all oh, la. It's a donations for dick, oh, donations for dick. I'm going to get donating. that dick and it's funky it all out. I'm going to grab him donating. by the balls. I'm going to drain, oh, it. Oh, drain oh, it, drain oh, it, it all out. I'm going to oh, get that dick and put it for dick. I'm going to get that dick and it's funky it all out. I'm going to grab him by the balls. The balls. I am gonna drain it, it, drain it, it all. It's a lot. It's a donation. Get that dick and put donations it in my mouth. I'm gonna get it's that dick. It's, it's a Sunday. I'm gonna pop him by the balls. I am gonna donating. drain it, drain donations it all. It's a lot. It's a proper oh, dick donation. It's a Sunday, baby. Oh. oh. It's a Put Sunday. your hole in your hoodie.